Hello, my friends. Welcome to 10 questions to shake up your final PMP exam prep. Now, I asked you 10 questions a few days ago, and I gave a challenge to anyone to put something out on social media answering these questions. I haven't heard back, so I thought I should answer the questions for you and show you how you could do it. The very first set of questions, one to five, were as follows. Explain the four values of the Agile Manifesto. Explain the Agile Manifesto principles, all 12, or at least three. Tell me what the five process groups are, what are the 10 knowledge areas. And question five was explain how the five process groups correlate to practices in the world of Agile. So I'm going to answer these questions for you one by one. We will start off with questions one to five. What I expected you to do here is answer the four values of the Agile Manifesto, and the four values are as follows. And to get these four values, just go on down to the website agilemanifesto.org, and you can get a list of all of these. It's right there on the page. So number one, individuals and interactions over processes and tools, working software over comprehensive documentation, customer collaboration over contract negotiation, and number four, responding to change over following a plan. Uh, I was looking for you to take this a step further and explain that individuals and interactions are valued over processes and tools. Work in product is valued over documentation because you cannot use the software if it's not working. You can use the documentation when the software is working, but if you don't have a work in product, you cannot use the software and the documentation is useless. So we've got to value the product over the documentation. That is not to say that documentation is not important. It's talking about value. Number three, customer collaboration is to be valued over contract negotiation. Because no matter how much you negotiate a contract, if there's no collaboration, you will not get along with the customer. The project will not end well. Number four, Responding to change should be valued over following a plan because if the environmental factors change and you do not change to respond to the environmental factors, your project is going down the tubes. So responding to change is valued over following a plan. And that is how I expected you to go through the values of the manifesto, not in those same words, but in your own way. But if you found yourself struggling, it's not a good sign. Question two, I expected you to do the same. Talk about the 12 principles of the Agile Manifesto. As you can see here, I've abbreviated them, summarized them. So customer satisfaction through early and continuous delivery of valuable product, welcome change in requirements, deliver working software frequently, collaborate with the business, business people and developers should work together daily, build projects around motivated individuals, use face-to-face -face communication where possible, Working software is the primary measure of progress. Working product is the primary measure of progress. It's important that we don't just look at software because Agile is all across the board, not just for software, but hardware and other products and services. Sustainable development, you should be able to maintain a constant pace. It didn't say fast pace. Number nine, continuous attention to technical excellence and good design enhances agility. Number 10, keep it simple. Simplicity, the art of maximizing the amount of work that you didn't do. Don't do busy work. If there's a way of delivering 100K value by doing smaller work, then do the smaller work. Don't do big old work for doing sake. Number 11, self-organizing teams, they get the best results. Number 12, regularly reflect on your lessons learned, retrospectives, make adjustments, tune and adjust accordingly. And that's the 12 principles of the Agile Manifesto. I could blow it out a lot more. I have videos where I've blown it out a lot more, but you should be able to blow this out a lot more. The third question was the five process groups, initiating, planning, executing, monitoring, and controlling, and closing. Initiating is where you authorize the project. Planning is where you plan. Executing is where you carry out the plan. Monitoring and controlling is where you're checking the work as it's been carried out. You don't wait till the work is carried out before you check. It's meant to be ongoing. So executing and monitoring and controlling are a continuous loop. It's like the plan, do, check, act cycle. And number five, closing is where you close out either a phase in the project or the project as a whole. Question four says the 10 knowledge areas. And what I was looking for you to do is to explain the 10 knowledge areas in 
your own way. So I said, what are the 10 knowledge areas? Well, the integration, scope, schedule, cost, quality, resources, communication, risk procurement, and stakeholder. And I expect you to say integration is the unification, the coordination, and the combination of processes. Scope management is scoping out the project in order to effectively plan it. Schedule management is planning out the timeline of the project. Cost management is understanding what the budget is and managing the budget. Quality management is fitness for use, conformance to requirements, and customer satisfaction, and ensuring that is managed into the project. Resource management is about ensuring that you have a plan for acquiring the resources, developing them, managing them, controlling the resources of a physical nature. Communications management is planning the five W's and the H of communications, the what, when, where, why, who, and how of communication. Risk management is planning how we're gonna manage uncertainty, positive uncertainty, negative uncertainty, and then managing it all through the project and ensuring you're monitoring those risks. Procurement management is planning what are we gonna procure, why, and when creating the RFPs, RFQs, RFIs, IFNs, ITN, sending them out, getting a response back, checking through all of those proposals and making sure you select the most qualified vendor or seller or sellers. Finally, we have stakeholder management, which is identifying the stakeholders, planning how to get them engaged, engaging them effectively, and then monitoring to make sure that they are still as engaged as they need to be. And those are the 10 knowledge areas. Then question five, was correlate the practices in the world of Agile to the five process groups. So initiating is like the vision. We talk about this on page 49 and 50 of the Agile Practice Guide. Planning is all across the board. It's a backlog, release planning, iteration planning, creating the definition of done. Executing is where you're carrying out the work. This is the daily stand-up meetings, the product demos, retrospectives, where the team is actually getting work done. Monitoring and controlling is a continuous integration, continuous testing, continuous deployment. We talk about this on ending loop in the world of Agile. And finally, we have closing, and this is customer feedback, lessons learned, but it's done iteration by iteration. It's not a big bang at the end where we close out the project. It is done over time. So at the end of every sprint, you're going to have your retrospective, and then you're going to have any other information that needs to be put back into the backlog as a result of continuous improvement. And that wraps up the five process groups, my friends. This was the easier part of the assignment. The assignment was 10 questions. So I gave you questions one to five, but the part that I know a lot of people are probably waiting for me to go through is questions six to 10. Those were not a cakewalk. Now let me show you what question six to 10 had. Question six to 10 had explain how the 10 knowledge areas of project management correlate to the world of Agile. Question seven, explain the 12 principles of project management set forth by PMI in PMBOK 7. Number eight, explain each of the 49 processes of project management and tell me each output for each one of the 49 without looking at the book this time. Number nine, for each of the 49 processes, give an accurate depiction of how change management flows through every single process. And then I gave you a question B, 9B, I said, then walk me through how each of the 49 processes maps to a practice in the world of Agile using PMI's Agile Practice Guide. And number 10, walk me through issues, risk, decisions, corrective action, preventive action, defect repair, and updates. So what I'm expecting you to do if you're stuck is to ask your instructor, whoever your instructor is, give them a test and ask them to answer these questions. If they're not able to answer these questions, they probably shouldn't be your instructor because this is the meat of the PMP exam. It is this thing that makes the PMP exam tick, my friends. This is the grimy bottomless pit of the PMP exam where all of the sludge is and you need someone. You need someone who is a tour guide to take you through this sludge. In the next episode, I will be walking you through all of the answers to these grimy questions. I would love for you to hit like and subscribe on this video. Inspire me, motivate me. As soon as I get 100 likes, I'm going to create answers for these grimy questions 6 to 10. Looking forward to it.